Hey, <clears throat> just wanted to record this in case I didn't have time to write it down. Um, yeah, it's been an interesting day. Uh, we're training a new new guy at work. His name's Ivan. Ivan Torres, pretty cool kid, 21 years old. Ginger is a professional archer. Uh, knows a lot about uh, computer technology and stuff like that. And uh, so we're in Richard's Court, where the big fountain is at the mall. And he was teaching me about a Raspberry Pi. It's like a little mini computer. And uh, the things you can do with it. And I just had a lot of questions for him because I'm so, like, just not good <laughs> with technology. But I respect it a lot. I'm, you know, using it right now to record this on my smartphone. But anyway, as we're having this conversation about, you know, data streams and Google Fiber and how the Internet's like the collective human consciousness and all that fun stuff, um, we're standing by the directory. And, and it's so funny uh, just how different people are. Some just see the security officer standing there and they go right to you and they're like, I need help finding this. And you're like, yeah, it's over there. And you got some people who walk right up to the map and they'll try their hardest on their own to find what they're looking for. And, you know, of course I'll still ask, Did you need, do you need help finding anything? And this middle-aged guy and his teenage daughter come walking up and I'm like, hey, you guys need help finding anything? And he's like, nope, nope. I think we'll I think we'll just figure it out here on the map. I'm like, cool, man. And I'll admit, I kind of under, not quite under my breath, but out loud, I kind of give the snarky remark. I'm like, you know, it's not like I'm standing right here and can point you in the right direction or anything. And I think I said it a little less snarky than that, but he was just kind of like, no, yeah, we got it, blah blah blah, and they left. And this just heavy thought hit me um, about that's kind of, and I have nothing against this guy. I actually respect him for, you know, maybe not wanting to waste my time and finding it himself or maybe that's how he learns better that way. I don't know. But the thought that came to me um it's often the things that may, might initially frustrate us about other people that's actually we're seeing an image of ourselves, something that frustrates us about ourselves. Um, if that makes sense, um, there's a song called Pictures of You by Jewel that my friend Amy sang a long time ago. But basically, it's a line that's like, you know, do you hate her because she's perfect? Do you hate her because she's pretty? Do you want to, like, you know, gouge her eyes out because they're so beautiful, and do you hate her because she reminds you of you? You know, do you hate him because he's gay, because he's a faggot? Do you hate him because he reminds you of you? And anyway, um, let's need to get to the main point. So the main point is, I thought, how often has my approach to God been similar to this interaction I have with this man and his daughter? where I'm in the, the shoes of this guy. You know, let's say the directory is scripture. You know, how often do we get into the word? And Paul talks about this, I think, in Romans, um, where the, the Jews think that it's the scriptures that will save them when it's actually that relationship with God, um, not these, you know, dead words on a page. Um, but... You know, how often do we go to the directory um, to, like, you know, get answers to our questions? And the thing is, you'll get the answers. Like, that's what a directory is for. You're trying to find a place. As long as you know, have a sense of direction, a map is useful. Um, and this guy had a sense of direction and was probably got to wherever he was going to. But what he missed out on, what I missed out on was... You know, let's say in this situation, I am God. I'm not God. But in that situation, you know, 
the directory <laughs> is the scripture, and I'm the living, breathing relationship. And this guy just completely kind of ignored me because he just wanted a simple answer to his question where a certain store was. And I could have acknowledged that and been like, all right, cool. You don't, you don't need help finding anything. Well, how are you doing today? And uh, what has been the highlight of your week? Uh, you're on a daddy daughter date. You know, I could have, you know, if he had the basic logistical part <laughs> figured out, we could have engaged in a real meaningful, however long or short it may have been, a real conversation, a real relationship. But that was ruined potentially by me um, projecting onto this guy, judging him. And maybe, you know, I don't know exactly where his heart was in all of it, and that's not my room to judge. But, you know, bringing it all back on my end, I just think, you know, how many times have I jumped into the scriptures just trying to find answers or like trying to have that relationship with God when he's like standing right there next to me just waiting like, but when are you going to talk to me? You know, I left you those words in that book when, you know, I'm distant or, you know, distanced from you. And, you know, you're maybe living in a way that the Spirit can't abide in your heart so you can go back to the Word to remind you that relationship you're missing out on. Um, how long is this? Seven minutes, okay. But, where's the nugget? What's the nugget of all this? Um, as you can see, it's... <laughs> the grass was green when I rolled in. So, uh, that's pretty crazy. But anyway, um, Pastor Lauren talks a lot about unrighteous religiosity. You know, well, I do all these things the scriptures say, get my ducks in a row, I can get to heaven. You know, August burns red, there's a line... I think it's from Leveler. So one of the songs on there. Uh, or pre ah, anyway. The line is, you crown your religion instead of your king. Um, turning your religion into an idol. Worshipping that instead of the god that the religion is supposed to point to. Um... It really just comes back to love. Um, you know, Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Um, seek that, that love relationship, and everything else will just fall into place, you know? The food shelter, physical needs. It's just, we often see the opposite where people live in these massive houses and, you know, food is rotting in their fridge because they can't eat it fast enough. But they're empty inside. They're hollow because they're trying to fill that God-shaped hole with a perfect wife or perfect kids or perfect job. And it's just, it's just frustrating to me that I forget these things. You know, looking people into the eye when you talk to them. Um, well, why is it hard to look people in the eye? <laughs> You're afraid of what they might see inside of you? That you're a fraud. <laughs> we're all a bunch of posers. Trying to be something we're not. We're all trying to be perfect. We're not. That's what I appreciate about the 
Christian community, I'm a sinner. I can look you in the eye and not turn away. I mess up every day. I'm selfish. I look at girls and objectify them all day long at work. And a friend of mine said, when a hot girl walks by, the first glance, the first notice, that's a God thing because he created that beautiful masterpiece. And then the following stare, that's the devil thing. <laughs> that's the devil. That's the lust. The coveting. Ah, I need I need friends I can talk to about this kind of stuff. And moving in with Anthony, hopefully in a week or two. Anthony Wardell. And we talk about this kind of stuff, so, so I won't be talking to a dead <laughs> smartphone. But anyway, it's just... The basic needs are met. The map is there if you want to find your answers. Where the joy lies in is having real real relationships with people, with your God, with your family. Amen.